A city bursting with energy and creativity. Young, dynamic, sparkling and diverse. Rotterdam is where everybody wants to be. Following in the footsteps of the famous Rotterdam-born philosopher, scholar and humanist Desiderius Erasmus, we encourage discussions and critical thinking to bring informed citizens closer together. At the heart of all the action, immersed in the vibrant city, stands the Rotterdam Public Library, one of the largest cultural institutions in the Netherlands. The Rotterdam Public Library is a treasure trove for scholars and library officers from all over the world. Its vaults contain the world's largest Erasmus collection. His books have had a profound effect on the free society we live in today. And even though Erasmus lived 500 years ago, his ideas are still extremely valuable to us today. Not only in Rotterdam and the Netherlands, but also throughout the world. So where is this bustling city? Rotterdam is the second largest city in the Netherlands, the gateway to Europe and an international hub of trade and innovation. Bombarded in the Second World War, the place had to be rebuilt from scratch and its people did so with pride and resilience. With a rapidly growing diverse population made up of over 170 nationalities, Rotterdam is never short of fresh thinking and cross-border innovation. Today, Rotterdam ranks among the most popular destinations worldwide. People from all over the world flock to experience our amazingly diverse and ever-changing city. Rotterdam is honored to host the IFLA World Library and Information Congress of 2023. Welcome. 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 In Rotterdam. And welcome to everything you always wanted to know about Dutch libraries, this case. This is the second time, uh, Theo, Theo Kemperman at my table, that we, that we do this promotional video uh, for the WLIC, the World Library in Conference. Um, and it's a great pleasure to, to, to sit here with this whole group at the table and to, to let people around the world, because I know people are going to be watching this from different time zones to the smallest place, to the biggest cities all over the world, this is going to be watched. We're going to have a look at Dutch libraries and best practice in Dutch libraries, both academic, university libraries, special libraries. We're going to talk about satellites. We're going to give a brief introduction to the conference and what people can expect. And we're going to try to make people uh, eager to come over and to see us in Rotterdam. Theo, a lot of energy in this film, in this little clip. Um, you've been working very hard at the National Committee as a chair. You're uh, the, the CEO of the Rotterdam Public Library. Um, what, do you, what do you hope that people will... Why is it in Rotterdam? What do you hope that people will take away from this conference? Well, let me first start with uh, t saying you it's not only a great pleasure, but also a big honor to have all these esteemed colleagues here uh, and hoping for even more people from all over the world coming to this spectacular city. What I hope that they pick up is that uh, also the Netherlands has a great library system in all its diversity. I hope uh, they experience new colleagues, new contacts. I hope they experience all the possibilities our Dutch library laws provide for us, especially the the, the most recent law in public libraries really gives us wings. Um, can be an example for a lot of other countries how to react on that and how to uh, make sure that their own country uh, can operate within this public library um, realm, mm -hmm. including all the other libraries. I hope people also pick up something of the beauty of this country, especially of, so, uh, especially of course of this magnificent city. Excellent, Theo. Well, well, sit at the table. I want to ask you more questions, but before, First things first, we, we, we go on. Uh, we want to, to give the microphone to Barbara Lisson, president of IFLA. Uh, she's in India right now, uh, so we had to record uh, the interview with her a little bit earlier. But I'd like to go to, to Barbara Lisson. Before we go into the conference and what people can expect, Tell us a little about your presidency, because it has been troubled times. We had, we had the war in Ukraine, we still have the war in Ukraine, we have COVID. Um, quite some changes in the organization. 
how has this been for you? And, and especially, what are you looking forward to, to the future? Because I think we have always have to look at the future and what the future may bring. Well, the future is, of course, the most important thing to look at. But sometimes it's always helpful and necessary to look at the past and to maybe think what could the past help to, to, challenge, to meet the challenges of the future. And that is important. But the most important thing for me was that we met after the COVID time, which is not over really, but we think it is and we hope it will be over totally. We met in Dublin for the conference. Uh, we did not have a conference in 2020. We had an online conference in 2021. And I saw so many people who were happily coming to Dublin and who enjoyed being together and to exchange uh, everything, personal yes. exchanges, of course, professional exchanges in that, in that wonderful, wonderful town. And you see the organizational changes are still ongoing. We will have a new secretary general, hopefully could present them even before our conference in Rotterdam, but surely in Rotterdam. So that will be, of course, a, Amazing, yeah. Great, yeah, yeah. a great step into the future yeah. because the secretary general of IFLA always is, an, uh, well, it's a position that uh, designs the work of IFLA. And that is the center of all the voluntary work that we have in IFLA. And the staff, of course, in IFLA is also related to the voluntary work, but also, of course, to the Secretary General. The President is just presenting. <laughs> no, you're the face. You're the face of IFLA. You travel so much. You do such great work. Uh, but to the conference, because we have a limited time. Uh, what can we expect? Your theme uh, for your presidency? How will that reflect on the conference? And, and, and I know people are eager to come, but what, what can they expect? Can you just shine a little light on it? <laughs> well, we can expect a lot because the professional sections, mainly the professional sections, are working so eagerly on the program. And they have been working that uh, in a way that is really, really admirable. So my theme, and we will have a conference with actually two themes, because uh, Christine McKenzie's theme in 2021, when the conference should have been taken place here in Rotterdam, uh, was let's work together. My theme is libraries building a sustainable future. So now we combine the two themes more or less with libraries building a sustainable future by working together. So, <laughs> what else could very we do? Clever, very clever, very <laughs> what clever. What else could we do? And of course, this uh, working together and collaboration is so important for everybody and of course for IFLA as well because it's a world organization and collaboration through the continents and across the continents is a very sometimes stressful, but also very interesting. And, and well, we have to come to an end, but, but if you could point out the focus point for the future, will sustainable development goals probably be the focus point for years to come? Are there other focus points that you see now? Well, of course, the sustainable development goals will continue from the UN side until 2020, 2030. So we are just half time. Yeah. And IFLA is using the Sustainable Development Goals for many purposes. One purpose is, of course, creating sustainability, achieving the goals, but also doing advocacy for libraries yeah. through the goals. And this is both. I don't want, of course, to interfere in my incoming president's <laughs> actions and activities, but I think that she will also continue with that topic yeah. in a way. And for me... Um, Everything was related to artificial intelligence and the impact of artificial intelligence onto the library, onto the librarians and onto our work and services. I think it is a crucial thing and I would like to see IFLA to take that over. Crucial indeed. And saying that, I think it's crucial for you to, if possible, come over to Rotterdam and, and see us all there because we look so much forward to seeing you there and I look forward to seeing you again there, Barbara. Sure. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, Thank I'm you. happy. Thank you. Wow. Theo, wow. Barbara. Theo. Ba uh, Barbara. Always a pleasure Please. to listen to Barbara. Right. Um, well, we got some impressions, uh, but, but, but coming back to you, um, I know people from, from outside the Netherlands may not know, but we have quite a few remarkable services in the Netherlands. Um, 
talk about the EDOs, the, the, the communication, digital communication with the government and all that sort of services. What, what stands out for you if you think about Dutch libraries, Rotterdam libraries? What, what's, what's well, that's, a, that's a, a great question, but also a very difficult question because so many things stand out. I mean, we have a great uh, network of, of really spectacular palaces of the people, so our physical presence is uh, quite spectacular. Our online presence, uh, likewise. Uh, the programs we developed for all our patrons, so many different people, cultures, etc. Uh, I think it's outstanding and still growing. You mentioned a few. Um, um, and also, I guess, um, building together on, um, on this sustainable library field, including something which I think is very important for a sustainable future, these community librarians, this network of, of growing young librarians who um, make sure that everyone can participate in a future and in, a, in, in, in cities, in environments which are um, uh, increasingly becoming more difficult to follow. So it's... Um, it's great work, there are great programs, great physical presence. I think we're doing well. And, and one last thing, if you want to really persuade people to come over, uh, beside the great city, the great libraries? I would love to make sure that people come to Rotterdam because this is a spectacular um, city. But in, uh, in the sense of sustainability, I would also like to stress that you can also participate online. And from today on, uh, you can register it, you re you registrate yourself for the online participation. And, and this is also a way to make sure that everyone all over in the world, all in the world, can participate without the necessity to travel long distances to Rotterdam. I'm sure a lot of people will want to yes. be here physically because they want to engage with each other. But it is also possible in an online way. And I think that's but it's about sustainability. Till the 16th of June for the online registration, you can sign on, but we hope to see you here. Thank you so much, Theo, for being here. Uh, we only have a short time. For I know, everyone. I'll be here. We move on to the next guest. Thank you so much. Yes, and we're back. Uh, like I said, when we started the introduction, we have uh, academic libraries, we have public libraries, we mentioned special libraries. There's a lot to discuss today at the table. We only have a short time. I'm sitting here with Kees, Kees Teselski from the National Library of the Netherlands, the KB, uh, as we call it. Uh, you're a web archiver, sitting with Sanne Frequem from the University of Utrecht. Your work relates to each other. Uh, you also walk through the halls, the, the hallways of the KB sometimes. Absolutely, yeah, Absolutely. pleasure. <laughs> uh, Sonne's Twitter handle is, I have to mention this, <laughs> Dr. A tomb every day. A tomb a day, a yes. Tomb a, day. a tomb a day keeps the doctor away, yeah. <laughs> it says a lot about time travel, excitement. Uh, I first go to Case. Case, Case, can you tell us web archiving? Uh, why is it important? And, and what is so special about your job that, that makes you want to go up every morning and go to work? Well, I'm curator of the digital collections, the national collection of KBE National Library. And the Dutch national web domain is one of the oldest and also one of the biggest of the world. So what we're actually doing is that we try to preserve a tiny bit of all of this, uh, what, uh, what happens online for future generations to understand our digital culture. But also we look back in time, what happened in the past, what's still there online and what can we save and how can we, uh, do we tell the story to the future generations about our digital culture. And, and um, I somehow saw in one of your presentations the dark ages when, when it comes to digital born material. Uh, what do you mean about that? Well, the digital dark age, we call this the period in future that we do not have enough sources to tell this story about our digital culture. So actually, I have to tell you, we are the only country in the world which does not, not have any form of digital or, or, or of a, a legal deposit law. And that means that we have to ask permission for every owner of a website to preserve. And that's why we can only preserve a tiny bit of all the beautiful stuff which is online. And in your relationship to the universities in the Netherlands, the academic libraries, uh, Sanne, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your work? What are you working on at the moment? Yes, well, I have a, a wonderful uh, project uh, running from, um, from Utrecht Uni University together with uh, KB. Uh, we are developing a serious game, which is called Medieval Me. 
Uh, it's a game for high school students, 15 uh, till 18 years old. And the purpose of the game is to show students how important interdisciplinary collaboration is. So, you know, uh, I am an art historian, but in my daily work, I work with scientists, I work with uh, religion scientists, I work with all kinds of different all, uh, all aspects of the, um, uh, of the ac academy. Yes. And uh, we try to, um, to let the, uh, the, the, uh, the kids in the game see that, you know, science is about collaboration. And, and are the kids actually really involved in, in what you're building, what you're making? Or do yes, you have a say in yes, it? absolutely. Well, uh, our target group is uh, 15 uh, till 18 years old. So that's quite a diff <laughs> difficult target group, so to say. So to be sure that we are not making something where they uh, will say, ah, oh, boring, we don't, don't, don't want to do that. Um, we, we develop it with them. And one of the most exciting aspects is that we take the heritage of the uh, KB National Library, um, which is in a sense a medieval manuscript. So it's Der Nature Blume, which is a 15th century manuscript, one of the most important pieces from, uh, uh, from the KB. And we bring that into the classroom using virtual reality. So that's of, cor of course also a good selling point to, yes. the, to the students. And for me, as an art historian, it's important to let uh, the kids really see and play with the heritage because by playing you're learning. Sounds really cool. I'm sure people want to learn more about that. Case last thing, um, if I talk about the TARDIS time traveling, uh, do you also think about the future when you, when you, well, both of you, when you work on this very shortly? Yes, well, actually, I always, uh, as a curator with my web archiving team, we also talk about it what will happen within 50 years. Uh, or, or what, how will people see within 50 years our time and what do we need to preserve for, our, for the future to understand our time? Look back and that's the time travel of what we are doing. Well, thank you so much. Uh, you understand it's just a short uh, light on, on something very special, but we'll, we'll learn more in the future, no doubt. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, Winston, Winston Brendan, uh, we're going back to Winston Brendan. We asked Winston to, to look at our work as, as librarians uh, from the community librarian aspect. Uh, Theo already mentioned community librarianship. Uh, yeah, but let's listen to the first item from, from Winston. <laughs> When I entered the library as a little boy, all I could see were those large book closets that looked down upon me with the promising threat of information overload. Yet what I loved most about the library were the people. In my mind, there have always been two types of people present in the library, the seeker of information and the curator of information. I always pictured them in a dance of questions and answers, thus giving a physical representation of the phrase seek and thou shall find. But as of late, I noticed a change in the requests that are coming forth from the seeker. And it laid bare a different side of these curators, these librarians. I watched as digital technology took hold of my beloved analog librarians and I witnessed their continuous effort to make sure that the information was accessible for everyone, remained accessible for everyone. An example of this is a program designed for those who sometimes find themselves lost on these government websites. It's called IDO, Information Point Div Digi uh, Digital Government, or as librarians could call it, I do. So if you happen to be lost, my advice would be to simply go to a library. Ask these librarians if they can help you find your way. I'll promise you, they will stop with what they're doing. They will turn around. They will look at you. They will open their mouths and they will reply, I do. Thus creating a physical representation of the phrase, seek and thou shall find. <laughs> Well, thank you, Winston. That, that, like I said, you, you, you moved me. You, this, this, this is always special to, to learn from this perspective. We can talk technology, how interesting it is, and, and, and I love to listen to technology first, but these things are always what it comes down to in our actual work. Um, 
We had a conversation earlier with Cynthia Lim, associate professor at the TU Delft, uh, also a great piano player. Not everyone knows. Uh, but uh, but um, she talked about Library Lab and, and some of the things she's working on from the TU Delft uh, Academic Library and, and all through all the networks of the library network in the Netherlands as well. So let's go to Cynthia. Sitting here with Cynthia Lim, uh, lab co-director, I have to look, Future Libraries Lab and at the Delft University of Technology, uh, among many other things. Uh, great musician. I know you from uh, the NLAEC, uh, National AI Coalition uh, startup. Interesting project, bringing people together around AI in the Netherlands, also from the cultural sector. Um, but today we're talking about Future Library Lab. Uh, how did it come about? What, what is it and how did it come about? Yes, so the Future Libraries Lab is a collaboration between the National Library of the Netherlands and Delft University of Technology. The original roots uh, came about when I was here in the National Library as a researcher in residence. And I'm a computer scientist and AI researcher uh, and was working on yeah, being able to, to access more richly all those historical resources we have in libraries. When we did that, uh, we were interested in working together more. We see these huge challenges on AI in libraries, but also generally library surfacing. Uh, we need research on that. And in Delft, we have a lot of research. We have the computer science research, but also designers. And then we thought there are these Delft design labs, collaborations between more design and innovation oriented people and external partners. And we framed the future libraries lab as one of the labs in that context. So libraries bring, I think that they want to invent what they're thinking about to the lab and the lab decides uh, what they want to work on, what they bring to light. Yes, so, so basically we have four main themes. One is about knowledge access and discovery, so more about library servicing, uh, also one about serving individuals and communities. Then we look at diversity and inclusion in future libraries. Uh, it's one of these few places where we actually have still a broad representative sample of people coming mm -hmm. in and learning. And finally, we also look at more of the building challenges. If you need future libraries, what are the requirements on spaces? I think it's amazing. Uh, I know countries will be jealous when they hear about this and they want to know more. Uh, another project that you're working on is the Recommended Requirement Project. Uh, we have a little time, but what can you say about yes. the, that project? Uh, so, so that project um, actually was framed in this diversity and inclusion team. We see that, that libraries, as I said, attract a broad range of people, but they might not come there anymore purely for information access. They also come there for the social space. They might meet each other. They might also meet different perspectives. So as social room grows in libraries, but shelf space diminishes, mm -hmm. a bigger question is what do you put on these shelves? And what's your responsibility as a curator in the library in terms of putting things forth to your people? Uh, so in this project, we were thinking of what requirements are in libraries to, to curate this in a responsible way. Ultimately, we want to connect that to also more digital recommenders that may help you, uh, this, yeah, guiding you what you might Choose, like to yeah, read. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I want to know more. Yeah, yeah. All so to it, it was very cool because I really got to speak here both with really people at desks who were thinking about this or people buying new books, but also, of course, think about it as a computer scientist. Like, what does that mean for how I see a collection and how I filter in this? And let's say it's complicated, but that yeah. means more research is needed. And that's a good thing, I think, in the end. Uh, finally, because I know it's still a bit of a, a mystery and a secret, but I, I know yeah, there's, there's a new thing on the, on the block. That's called the curator bot. Uh, can you just shine just a little light? Sure, yeah, yeah. So, so the curator bot is indeed currently an ongoing experiment, again, between designer and computer science colleagues and the library. And it has to do with curation and more personalized access. So we've seen ChatGPT as chatbot yeah. functionality. Um, that's now been wired up to metadata and reaching the Visbook, one of the... Pieces, one of the eldest books on, on fish and how we yeah. looked at fish back the then. The sea, the oceans, yes. yeah. Uh, and now this curator bot uh, will be an attempt at more broadly giving access to this fish book because people can now chat with the curator bot about that particular artifact. So questions. you can actually yeah. talk to the book. So, so you, can, you can talk to, well, to the bot about the book, but the bot will more interactively tell you about what's on the page and what maybe is more accurate or less accurate about things or give some historical context and also about the library. So uh, yeah, it, it, it will be your personalized uh, introduction to that particular piece. Amazing stuff. Thank you, Cynthia, so much. This, this university is working together with libraries through all layers. I, I think uh, amazing stuff. And, and definitely come to the Netherlands and, 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 and hear for yourself about all these amazing projects. <music>
talking to a book and getting instant answers. It's quite amazing, isn't it? Yes. It is amazing. I'm sitting here with Jan Toon Borsboom and Miriam van der Beemt of the Lock Hall, one of my favorite libraries around the world. I have to say, I always get very happy when I come and enter the Lock Hall and see all the things that you're doing out there. Uh, today, I ask you to, to, well, to relate also to what Cynthia said and what I said earlier um, about the hybrid space. You're a specialist on the hybrid library. Uh, I'm sure quite a few people out there may not have any idea of what a hybrid library uh, looks like or is supposed to look like or what it could bring. Uh, Jantin, to start with you, can, can you tell us a little about what is the li hybrid library to you? Well, um, first of all, it doesn't really exist yet, so that makes it really exciting to work in this field, I think. Um, so the hybrid library is where the, well, you can say where the offline and the online, or the physical and the digital, the place where they meet, that's the hybrid part. So everybody knows the offline space of the library, yes? So it's the buildings, everybody knows them. And then we've got online parts of the library, which are like the website, or you can have digital books, um, but a lot of times these are two separated worlds. Mm -hmm. So what the hybrid library does is to really connect them, that it's like a seamless thing together. Uh, and this is really new um, and it's really interesting to, to see, um, because as people we are really already used to be in a hybrid way, like we have the phones yep. and they do a lot for us. If we walk, if you come to Rotterdam and you've never been here before and you need to go to the IFLA, you get your phone out and you can see where you have to walk. This is very hybrid. Yes. Uh, so what we want is that we create this uh, hybrid space in the libraries. And it's um, I the interesting thing is that we also have to make then an online space, which has the same um, important things that the offline spaces have because we have a really safe space uh, where you can be free, you can enter without having to buy something or without having to give all your data away. Yeah. And, and in online space, this is a really different situation nowadays because when you enter an online space, you do have to give your data away a lot of the time. So this is a really something that we should fix, I think. I like hear like the librarian for life, the image that I always <laughs> have 24-7, <laughs> there's always that, that, that person that guides you through life and it's possible. Just before we go to, to Miriam, um, how does it relate to the, the Kinnis Cloud, for the people who don't know, the Knowledge Cloud, and the yep. project you've been working on for quite some time? Well, the Knowledge Cloud, it's a methodology that we created for working with communities in the library around uh, societal issues. And one of the main things of a uh, knowledge cloud is that it's both offline and online. So we, uh, together with communities, we uh, co-create meetings in the library. It can be events with speakers or uh, brainstorms or uh, workshops. And in between these uh, offline meetings, we um, share knowledge online and we've built an online platform for that, a website. And there all the groups get their own space that they can moderate themselves, mm. where they can uh, have a conversation, people can ask them questions, but also they can curate a collection uh, of uh, book titles, but also online uh, videos or articles or podcasts. So it gets to be like a multimedia collection that is curated by the communities. Yeah, and and that's then I go to Miriam, because yeah. that, that's a nice bridge to... to, to because that this involves programming. This involves a lot of programming of course. and building communities. Uh, feel free to join in on the building communities <laughs> when it comes to programming, um, civic engagement, citizen science, mm -hmm. open science. What, what is your work like? Uh, what are you doing? Well, you 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 name a lot of subjects which are related to each <laughs> other, but all very difficult to explain in two sentences. But um, it requires a lot of programming, but building communities is not something we like to do. We like to work with already existing communities. Yeah. And one of the communities we work with, or actually two of the communities we combined as a, uh, as a community, is a group of people who are doing a citizen science projects in our city, uh, where they're building their own um, uh, measuring station. So they come in the library, they solder their own yeah. measurement station, they put it in their backyard, and so we... Uh, we map our city's heat um, 
Is it air well, pollution or is it heat? Heat, heat. at the moment, okay. yeah. We're, we're looking at air pollution as well as, well as water uh, quality. And, and so it's something the community uh, is, data. Is, is, yeah. is expanding, but uh, it comes from them. So we follow, but uh, that takes a lot of, uh, yeah. And you bring it on a big screen, so people coming into the lock hall, they can actually see this data yeah. visualized on a big yeah. screen. And, uh, and like today, it's 15 degrees out there, so it's not really that interesting to see uh, what the differences are. But when there is like a heat wave or anything, like last year we had a heat wave yes. that was quite, quite, he quite, quite heavy, um, then it's really interesting to see how your garden or how your neighborhood is scoring a a co in relation to other pl places in the city. Our city was one of the most hot the hottest, in our city hottest, in hottest inner city in Europe in 2020. Well, uh, the lock hall will be in the tour, so although yeah. I'm pretty so sure yeah. people please, uh, will enroll in the tour come. and come to the lock hall. Um, Barbara mentioned sustainable development goals. Mm -hmm. SDGs, we, we read a lot about them in strategic plans for libraries. Yep. Uh, I think in the lock hall, they are actually really important and they're quite visible. They are key. Do you have any, yeah. any plans for the future that you can share within minute the two of you oh, within a minute <laughs> <laughs> very big plans <laughs> well we're uh, developing like pro program lines so we uh, and in relation to the SDGs so the SDGs are key to the things we program or the activities we, yeah. we organize because we think that are the topics that the societal topics that matter and you have to you have you need a place you can put them in line and the sustainable development goals are really really useful for that yeah for us, it's very important to not only inform the people about these uh, sustainable development goals, but to try to activate all the people yeah. to together as the people work on them, because these are really important goals and we can only achieve them if we do it all together. And I think libraries can play a key role in that and we really should take that up as a library yeah. system. I totally yeah. agree. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here and sharing us. And like I said, the lock hall is, if you haven't been there, Please come visit. Come and visit. Uh, we go back to, to Winston. Winston's coming back. Talk about well, citizen participation and, and the role of the community librarian. Uh, we give the, mo the, the mic back to Winston. Can you imagine when there were but a few libraries where information would be gathered? As of right now, we find ourselves in a new era, an era where information is plentiful and overly accessible. And the question that gets asked is, what do we need the library for? To me, the answer is simple because the library, the entity, the institution isn't really about books. The library has always been about people. The information, the stories, the catalogs going back hundreds of years, all geared towards the uplifting and further development of people. The library as one of the last real public spaces, a place where no identification is needed, no transaction, no interaction, no eye contact. You can go in and out as you please. The library is not just a depot with room temperature and light adjusted as to preserve the book. No, the library is a public space adjusted to preserve the minds of the people. So in this new era, the library turns towards the people and asks the very same question that it has received. What do you need the library for? How can we use our space to help you create opportunity? How can we facilitate your idea? How can we tell your story to the world? The library remains near, accessible, ready for you to make its space your space. Ready for you to be a part of its collection. Thank you, Winston. Um, 
you are a true storyteller. I have to say that, uh, except for a community manager and all the other things, you are a true storyteller. Thank you so much. Sitting here uh, with Anki Kessler, CEO of the Library of Dordrecht, Public Library of Dordrecht, That's but right. surrounding region, region uh, city, and uh, Janni van der Vught. Uh, the Netherlands Library Association. I have to call Association of Public Libraries of the Netherlands. I have to put it correctly here. Um, I start. I start. We're going to talk about library education in the Netherlands because it's different from other places in the world. Quite exciting things happening down there. But I want to start with Anki. Anki, uh, we know each other for quite a while, uh, and and you're an inspiration to me always. I can Thank tell you, you that. Um, at the moment, you're working on uh, on a third space project. Yes. Uh, that's still, it's the Running bus. Up. The bus is going around. Yeah. Uh, can you tell our viewers from around the world just what what, what uh, is the third it's space? It's about uh, where also uh, Jan Tien is working at uh, with the Lock Hall, and the third space is uh, a search in which um, eight libraries in the Netherlands are searching for the relevant uh, connection between the digital uh, space and library service. And that's needed uh, because of the hybrid uh, solution we need in our services and our buildings. And uh, the reason why our organization stepped in was because um, we are um, uh, we want to know how the hybrid li library look like and what, what, how we can reach it in our possibilities, how we can uh, addition digital um, possibilities and uh, hybrid, hybrid forms to our buildings and make them more complete buildings than, and uh, services than now. And um, so that's the reason uh, our library, it's a difficult Dutch name, yeah. Anzet. Anzet. <laughs> Go for it. You can yeah. you can tell it. Uh, say so uh, is a parting uh, take the part in it. And it is also because we were are strong believers in the community library library. So uh, that you always stimulate people to come to share knowledge, uh, to help each other, uh, to meet each other. Uh, so uh, the third space is helpful in this. Well, I think also like it's. Um in the Netherlands, it's quite special because we, we, we are a network, we work together. Yeah. And I think this sort of ideas that come up and a number of libraries said, I want to be, take part in this, yes, I want to do this together with this library and this and library. This is and it is also a design process at itself. So work, learning to work to, with each other, yeah. uh, not knowing what the results will be uh, uh, and, and go for it. Yes. Uh, at the same time, because I think the hybrid library is very important, thinking about the future. At the same time, you're designing a new library in, in yeah. Dordrecht as well. I'm not designing it by well, my own. Well, you're not designing it. <laughs> <laughs> quite an architect. But uh, after but 10 years living uh, like a librarian in Dordrecht, it became time we had get a new building. And uh, the city hall is uh, uh, gets a new building. And uh, we tried very hard to uh, be a partner of this uh, uh, initiative uh, so we can uh, 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 reach a uh, an, an next uh, a city hall next uh, you call next library so an, a new form of uh, city hall and we are one of the partners we are going in this building um, with social service and with the municipality itself uh, also a little bit uh, a little part is tourist inf information and uh, we try very hard like uh, uh, our motivation every yes. time is is to uh, make from this building a third space yes. a third place uh, yeah. really and uh, a lot later on a third space and that's uh, that's that's what we trying to do and, and is it working to get all the noses in the same uh, direction uh, it is it another? is i think uh, but it takes some time because um when you're working for governance you have a really uh, other ambitions than working for a library and yet we still work for the same people and all we the uh, equality is that we want the same thing and the best for uh, the inhabitants, the residents of Dordrecht and the region. So that makes us finding together. But it's also a designing process of yeah. going and learning curve. It's yeah. very, very, very interesting. But it also requires, um, well, uh, maybe new skills for our librarians. And A lot. Mm, coming back to, to library education, I or in the Netherlands and Belgium, we, we, we didn't have a library education for, for quite, a t quite a some time. Uh, and always when I come, when I travel around, I, I come to countries, people are always like, what? That's impossible. How can you not have a, 
a library school. That, that's ridiculous. Uh, and I try to sort of say like, well, it's only not always a bad thing because if you can have modular education. But Johnny, tell us because you're working on this project and uh, a new library campus. Uh, um, what what's it going to look like? What what do you, what do you hope? it will bring to the Netherlands. We don't have a formal education anymore, but there is a lot of schooling going on. We have a lot of informal uh, ways of, of uh, empowering our uh, librarians. Uh, my job is to bring structure and uh, a logical curricul curriculum to yeah. uh, the education we have to provide for the people who come to our sector, new. Uh, we get a lot of new colleagues with uh, special uh, backgrounds that are very useful for the librarian, uh, for the library, uh, but they lack the sense of uh, the essence of what is a library in essence. Uh, working with information, knowing what it means to um, uh, open up information for people mm -hmm. is an, a, a special um, uh, skill. Yeah. Skill, yeah. Uh, and and we have to uh, show people how they c can bring their own skills in use of the, the people we work for in our libraries. So um, it's going to be modular yeah. because everybody brings its own skills, but it has to be, in a, a sense, uh, a logical way of uh, getting ready for the job you are going to do. So we have to make some paths of yeah. learning, education, social uh, work uh, uh, related uh, to government uh, information, uh, cultural uh, uh, programming for libraries, and Every individual that comes into our branch, our our uh, work, uh, can uh, pick out what they need to do, what they are supposed yeah. to do and want to do for the public. And the fact that it's modular may also make it more flexible, more easy to adjust. I know that from some curricula, they, they are. It takes years to change them, to bring something new. Eh? When you talk to a German library school and you say, can we do something new? They would say to you, mm. this would take quite some time to, to make changes in these sort of models. And this allows us to be more free to do with fake news. Uh, we talked citizen science, hybrid. We talked so many things that are needed in, in librarianship nowadays. Prompt engineers, we are sometimes called now when we talk about AR and the chat GPT and all the things that are happening out there. I think it could be quite an, ad an, an, an advantage to it like this. When, when, when will it be online, Yanni? And will it be available for international <laughs> people as well to look at? Well, we are still building uh, uh, the structure of the curriculum. So um, we hope to launch our new platform in the summer. Okay. But filling the platform with content takes longer. Uh, it's an advantage to be modular, but you have to build a lot. Uh, so it won't be ready all uh, in once. Uh, the program we're working on has a duration of uh, five years. So it gives us the possibility to take time and uh, choose uh, quality instead of uh, speed. On the other hand, uh, there is a lot available, so yes. sometimes you don't have to make it new. Yeah, you can easily harvest what's yeah. already there. there are quite a few webinars out there. Well, thank you two so much. We're going to the last uh, story from from from, from Winston, uh, relating to the to the building in this mm. case more than uh, to to the online stuff. Um, Winston, please. <laughs> Maybe by now you have noticed that I have come to love the world of the library. A world in which I was surrounded by knowledge, stories, and a lot of very distinctive librarians. Some were adventurous, some were innovative, some were storytellers, and some were just boring. They all had something in common, though. They all loved and protected the library with passion. 
But as of right now, there is a real transition happening. Librarians are coming to the realization that you are a library. And that what we need is your experience, your knowledge, your ideas and your stories to shape our collection. We are transitioning from granting the visitor access to what they want to know into finding out what they actually know. So please, picture the librarians as anthropologists, diving deep into your world of experience. Now, picture the librarians as gardeners, giving water to the seeds of your ideas by facilitating them. Picture the librarians as motivational speakers, spreading words of positivity and constructivity throughout your community. Picture the librarian as the curator of your stories, able to present them to a broad range of visitors. Now, picture yourself as the librarian. We are the library. And what librarians have in common is that we love and protect libraries with passion. So maybe by now you have noticed that I have come to love the world of the library. It is all because of my fortune to have encountered librarians that have nurtured, protected, and loved me. Well, thank you so much, uh, so much, Winston. Um, I'm always at parties saying like, I have the best job in the world. And I think it's great to be a librarian. I'm proud of being a librarian and I, I'm sure that, and that's one of the great things about this conference. You get the opportunity to meet more than 3,000 mm. librarians from all over the world who are all proud to be a librarian. And that creates a special, a special sort of energy in the room. So if only for that reason, I would ask people, please consider coming over because it's, it's a special moment to be together and be part of such sort of movement, uh, our job is important. Um, the last uh, item for today, before we, we close, is, is Sander van Kempen, Senior Advisor at the National Library and also involved in IFLA. He is he's part of the people deciding which is going to be the next best public library mm. of the world. So that's, uh, that's always uh, a big thing. Uh, the last couple of years in the Netherlands, we've done quite well with, with uh, School Zeven and uh, Den Helder. Uh, the local and forum uh, among the top, the last top five. So um, I'm wondering what this year will bring. Um, but let's give the word to Sander and to talk about satellites and, and library tours when you come over. Sander, I'm so happy to have you here. Uh, I know, I've seen it. You've put so much work and energy into organizing all this and getting everything ready. People coming over to the Netherlands, what can they expect? Yes, great. Well, thanks for having me and uh, the opportunity to explain. So the week before the conference, there are satellites. Um, there are uh, 26 satellites and they're spread over the Netherlands and Belgium uh, with a range of subjects from sustainability to library buildings to young adults, all kinds of stuff. So that's really very broad and very, very interesting for everybody to come and see. And then the day after the conference, there are the library visits. There are now 21 tours with 44 locations and still more coming. Um, and we have some great public libraries, uh, a former uh, Plotty Public Library of the Year Award winner in School 7 in Den Helder. Uh, we have Runners Up in Forum and uh, the Lock Hall and uh, also from Belgium, the Predikere, which is in a former monastery. It's also a very nice building. But we have public libraries in old prisons, in churches. There's lots to see. But also university and academic libraries are opening up their doors. Uh, we have the National uh, Library here in The Hague. Special libraries. Special libraries. We have special libraries as well. We have at Saim, which is the oldest Jewish library in the world, in Amsterdam. Uh, and they're on the same tour as the Library of Artists, which is the zoo. Wow. And the Library of the Rijksmuseum, which is the National Museum. So uh, also uh, the Walburg uh, Church in Zutphen, which is a library that dates back to 1564. So 
together with the, the library of the Peace Palace, the National Libraries in Belgium and the Netherlands, there is lots and lots. Even without the conference, it would be a rock yeah. to come to the <laughs> Netherlands, I think. So it's amazing, yeah. amazing work. You already mentioned, uh, we had a time, we already mentioned the Plotty, the, the Public Library of the Year Award. Yeah. Um, I know people, our theme is always as one of the yes. spectacular events yes. during this conference. Um, can you make them curious? Is that? Uh, it can't say too much. No, we can't say too much. It's very secretive. But uh, it, it again, it's uh, I, I'm. Uh, uh, it's always exciting for us, the jury as well, to see who will be applying and who uh, who will be the winner. But I think every time we have an amazing winner. Uh, last year we had some smaller libraries, which is also great uh, that applied. So. I again look forward to this great session uh, and, of course, great winner every time. Sustainability is an, uh, is an issue. We talk hybrid conference. We want yes. this conference more hybrid, uh, yeah. Sander, but also when it comes to traveling from satellites to the Netherlands or anywhere else. Yeah. What can we do? Yeah, uh, be as uh, sustainable uh, uh, as possible. We're, we're trying from the organizational point. We have a sustainable conference center. Ahoy is really putting their efforts in there. But also uh, uh, everyone traveling to the Netherlands, please make sure that you do it as, as sustainable as possible. So if you're traveling within Europe, please use the train or other forms of public, public transport. Uh, to make this uh, a really sustainable uh, uh, conference. Well, this is it. Uh, the end already. Um, a full program. Uh, everything you always wanted to know about Dutch libraries. Of course, it's not everything. Uh, there's quite a lot more to be known about Dutch libraries. But uh, please put your comments and your questions uh, on the YouTube channel of IFLA, where this is going to be posted. And, and let us know your, your, your questions, your thoughts, and anything else. Um, and, and once again, buy a ticket and come and see us in the Netherlands. I think the, the early bird registration goes on till the 16th of May. So you still have some time to buy a ticket for, for a much better price than, than later on. So, so look at that and look, go online. And, and uh, as I said, I could talk hours and hours with you guys. Thank you, speakers, for being here, for, for sharing your knowledge and your expertise with the world. And um, I'm sure you will be available to tell much more when people come over to meet us here. See you soon. <laughs>